Yo, what is up, everybody? Jumping here, and I am back on some Neo 2. And today, I wanted to make an in depth guide on inheritables. Mainly, I wanted to talk about how to actually place your revenant grave for your friends so that they can farm you, how you can farm other people's revenant graves, how you can actually maximize the familiarity, and actually give you some tips on how to do that, and then finally, how to actually place the inheritables that you have onto your build. I am going to be showing in this video me assembling a build. This is something I've never done before, but I really wanted to make this video because in my last build video I did, I offered to give out some Windstorm Gauntlets, and a lot of people have hit me up for them, and I've given it out to a ton of people, but I've noticed a lot of people, they don't understand how to farm Revenant Graves properly, and also a lot of people ask me questions about what they should be doing with the inheritables. So I decided I'm just going to make an in-depth guide and explain it all. Now I do like to go into great details in my videos. So I will be putting timestamps in the description and I will pin a comment if you want to skip around. Now the first thing I'm going to be showing here is how to place your revenant grave so that other people can actually summon you and then kill you and then farm you. So I want to say that when I first started off doing this, I was extremely confused myself. I didn't know what I was doing. I used the internet and I looked up a lot of information and there was a ton of it out there. Now, a lot of methods didn't work for me at all. Some methods worked, but they weren't consistent. And then finally, I had one of my friends, Lantern Mage, big shout out to you, actually tell me their technique and their technique really worked for me. It worked like a charm. It always works. Anyone who's gotten these Windstorm Gauntlets from me, which there's right now a lot of people from that previous video, can tell you that my grave always pops up very quickly. It's normally not that difficult, especially if they know how to farm it, which I'm trying to explain to people what to do because I want them to try to get as many Gauntlets as possible. So I'm going to be doing that in this video as well. But... What I'm going to show you right now is I'm going to go and place my grave. I have a friend right now. He's actually waiting for me to put my grave down. I told him I would message him once I've done it. So I'm going to show you exactly how I'm going to do it. And then he's going to farm it. And then I'm going to go and farm one of my friend's graves to actually get some gauntlets myself. And I'll show you how to properly farm the grave to try to maximize the amount of loot that you can get in whatever time period and it's pretty quick honestly a lot of methods i've noticed a lot of people talking to me and they're trying to farm my grave it's taking them a really long time but if i explain to them how to properly do it it's a lot faster so first of all i want to talk about the two main missions you really should be doing this on the first one is dark omens this is in region one and this is really a new game plus thing if you're going to be sharing divines it's going to be on new game plus but Dark Omens, this is in Region 1, so if you know someone who's just got to New Game Plus and you want to hook them up with some gear, this is definitely the perfect mission to drop for them, because they can farm it right away. And then the other mission I really like, which by the way, both of these missions are the same location, they are the same map. I think that's one of the reasons why this works so well. This is in Region 4, and this is the missing gun. I like both these missions because when I drop my grave, it seems to be very consistent. My grave will pop up really easily for people, and it's really easy to farm my grave on these missions. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to load up the missing gun, and I'm going to show you exactly what I like to do when I'm dropping my grave. Now, first things first, I want to talk about what I'm dropping here. So I'm dropping the gauntlets. They have windstorm damage. This is what this person wants. But I'm also going to give out a chest piece with life, a helmet with lock. I'm giving out a bow with an orange inheritable on it. And finally, I'm giving out an Adachi that comes with attack bonus skill because this is useful for a dual blade build, obviously. Now, you could give out legs and feet. If somebody wants that, maybe they just want to get some divine fragments, that's fine. But to be honest with you, when it comes to builds, no one is using the bonuses from legs or feet. That's just the truth. Everyone is using life, they're using attack, and they're using lock. They're not going to be using these other bonuses for the most part. So normally I don't even equip them. That way it's easier for my friend to actually kill me. It will be quicker for them. And I just think it's better. Now I need to die. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lure the enemy back over to the shrine. 
and I'm gonna try to find a spot where there is no revenant graves. Now, right now, the revenant graves are not loaded in. Hopefully, this is a good spot. We don't know, but I'm just gonna guess and say that it is, and I'm gonna die right next to the shrine. A lot of people will tell you you do not want to die on top of other revenants, and I tend to agree with that, but I have died pretty close to other revenants, and I've noticed it hasn't really affected much, at least on these levels, like the missing gun, for example. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rest the shrine three times. Do you have to rest three times? I don't know. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But this is what I always do, and it always works for me, so I'm just going to recommend you do the same. Rest at the shrine three times, and it seems like the Revenant Graves just loaded in for me, so you can see them. And yes, I'm in the clear. There was no Revenant Grave over there, so I should be good. Now I'm going to pick up the grave. A lot of people will tell you, do not pick up the grave. You can pick up the grave. It does not matter. It 100% does not matter if you pick it up. And now I'm going to rest again three times. And I will say, you know, maybe you don't need to rest three times, but this is what I always do, and it always works for me when I do it this way. And then finally, I can actually use a Divine Branch, and in my case, I actually have so little bit of experience, I'm going to use the Purple Branch to get out of the level. And then I'm going to go back to the main menu. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because you do not need to stay in the level. That's something a lot of people might say as well. You need to stay in the level or finish the level. You do not need to do that. You can exit the level. And at this point, I can chill here, I can watch some YouTube, or some Netflix, or whatever, or I can go and play. Now, if I get offline, my grave will eventually disappear. Or, if I go into another mission and I die, my grave will eventually disappear. So if I'm gonna play, I'm gonna try not to die. I think the best way of doing that is probably to go into a Tory gate. If you go into a Tory gate, I don't think your devs really count the same in a Tory gate as they would if you're just playing solo. So that's something that you can do, but you do not have to just sit here waiting for your friend to be done. You can if you like, but normally I go and farm something. That's what I'll do when people are farming my grave. And as long as I'm not dying or I'm not going offline, I know my grave is going to stay there for a good amount of time and hopefully they will farm it enough so that they can get enough of the pieces to actually complete their build. So now I'm going to message my friend and have my friend drop me a grave and then I'm going to go and farm that grave and show you how to properly farm someone else's grave to try to maximize the amount of drops that you can get in whatever time limit there might be. Alrighty, well my friend messaged me. He actually said that he placed his grave a while ago, so it probably is already here, but if it's not, I can actually do this technique to make it appear and it works for refreshing the graves to make them appear, and it also allows them to reappear so you can farm graves a lot faster. So this is Dark Oldman's, that's where he dropped it, and this is where we're going to look. Now this technique works on random graves and friend graves, and I can see the grave right away, it's just over here. So we are going to go and summon it, and we are going to kill him, and then we're going to see if we can get the loot. Now friend graves will always drop, 90% of the loot, so you are pretty much guaranteed of getting what you're looking for. Unless you have really bad RNG, and if you do, that's unfortunate, but I did not. I got the gauntlets, it's lumber chop damage, it's for the axe, it's a very powerful move, so I'm glad I got these. Now what you want to do, is you want to rest at the shrine once you have gotten your drops, and then we are going to close the app. Now, if your friend's grave is not popping up, this also helps. This will help you actually get the grave to pop up by closing the app. It's much faster at refreshing graves this way. And then the general rule is once you get the grave to appear, you always kill it, rest at the shrine, close the app, start the game back up, and repeat. So now I'm going to load it back up, and I will show you how the grave will come back immediately. Alrighty, well I am loading back up the mission after closing the app, and you're going to see that the graves are going to be back immediately, and I can just kill them again and get more loot this way. Now, a lot of people will tell you that you can go to the title screen, load back up, and then you can just wait for the graves to respawn. Or you can just sit there in the mission and wait for the graves to finally respawn. Now, when I've done that, maybe it's my PlayStation, I don't know, I don't have a pro. 
it takes like 10 minutes for the graves to actually respawn most of the time. By closing the app, it takes maybe a couple minutes to actually load back up. So this is just a much faster way of doing it. And like I said, it can also help you have the grave appear. So if you're having trouble with that, try closing the app. And then once it appears, follow the rule. Kill it, rest at the shrine, close the app, boot it up, repeat. Alrighty, so that is how you place your grave. And that is how you can effectively farm somebody's grave. Alrighty guys, so now I want to show you how I like to max out familiarity. At this point, I'm going to call it fan because it's shorter and it's not as much of a mouthful. When it comes to maxing out fam, I'm going to give you some tips on how you can do it a lot quicker. But I do want to say you can always use glue. Now, to be honest, that's not really realistic for most people. Most people aren't going to have a crap ton of glue and you're probably not going to want to waste your glue. And that's something I do not recommend. I do not recommend when you see a build for the first time maybe you've seen it on youtube or you just thought of it you know just in a spur of the moment you're like i want to make that build don't go wasting all your glue on a build that you are not confident that you're going to actually like there are ways you can actually test drive your build i will be showing that in the next segment when i talk about build crafting and actually placing your inheritables there are ways you can actually test drive it to really determine is this a build that you're going to like is this a build that you're going to actually want to play for a while? Or are you going to hate it and say, oh man, I really regret wasting all my glue or all of my time maxing out the fam? Because it can take a while to really max out all of the fam that you need for a build. So you really want to be fairly confident that it's a build that you're going to like. And although they have made it a lot easier to farm for glue now, it is still a pretty valuable commodity that most people are not going to want to waste, especially if it ends up being something that they just hate. i give you an example just real quick. Let's say you see the Justice Minister and it's combined with another set, so you get 20% melee bonus. You might see a YouTube video and they're using the Carnage Talisman and they are melting everything and you see that and you go man i want to make that dual sword build that looks awesome then you go out you make all the armor you use glue to max out all these inheritables and then you make the build you play with it and you're like oh my god i'm dying all the time i kind of miss my heavy armor if that is the case you might want to go back and if you wasted all that time or all that glue on a build like that you're going to feel kind of stupid. So it's something I really don't recommend. You really should be somewhat confident in what you're doing in terms of making your build before you really commit to it. I really want to stress that point. But if you're going to just farm the fam, you're not going to use glue. This is what I recommend. Now, first of all, you want to have some fam bonus. Now, on your ranged weapons, you can get fam bonus. It's almost 20% if the fam is actually maxed out on the ranged weapon, which it should be. So that's really good. Now, I only have that on one of my ranged weapons. So if I'm farming fam, I'm keeping my bow out all the time. If I do switch it for any reason, I try to always switch it back. Because if I don't have the bow out, I'm not getting that 20% fam bonus. And I want that. Also, on your accessories, you want to have fam bonus. Now, on this Magatama, I have fam bonus, I have life recovery and marita absorption, I have poison accumulation, and melee damage versus poison enemy. So this is a really good setup for my build. I can do great damage, and I still get that fam bonus. Now, let's say you only have one Yazakani, because I have the exact same thing on this. Well, let's say you have just one of these because you have bad RNG, you haven't gotten a second one yet. If that is the case, you can always replace something on your Yazakani, maybe something simple to get. Like, for example, Poison Accumulation is pretty easy to get. You can normally get that with Normal Umbicide. Same with Fam Bonus. You can get that with Normal Umbicide. So if you're going to be farming for fam, especially for a while, if you're making a brand new build, you're probably going to be farming for it for a while. Then it's a good idea to just replace something on your Yazakani, put the fam bonus on, and then once you're done farming fam, put the other thing back on. 
So let's say that you decided to get rid of your poison accumulation and you replaced it with fam bonus. Well then, just go ahead and put the poison accumulation on once you're done farming all your fam. It's very simple and it's something that I would recommend because you're talking about a lot of fam bonus that you can get from your accessories and your ranged weapon. It's going to help a ton. Now whenever you are farming fam, you should definitely be doing your gauntlets, your chest piece, and your helmet, especially if you know you're going to be putting all that on your new build. So on the chest piece, you're going to have life. On the helmet, you're going to have luck. And on your gauntlets, now this is kind of the grind, you're going to have maybe a skill damage, like in this case, tri-spark damage, and that's going to be hopefully my new build. I'm about 85% sure. I really like that idea for a build, and I'm going to try to commit to it and try it out, give it some testing. If I really like it, I will make it a build, I will make a video about it, it will be a lot of fun. Now when it comes to these skill gauntlets, it's going to take a long time. You have five skill gauntlets that you're going to have to max out because you're going to put that on every piece of your armor, theoretically. And if you're doing that, yeah, it's going to take a while. So you're going to really be dedicated to maxing out the fam to all these gauntlets. Plus... If you're making a brand new build, you're probably going to put attack on your build, so you're going to need to max out four attack gauntlets. When it comes to luck, life, and attack, you only need four of those stats because on the gauntlets, you can always temper attack on. On the chest piece, you can always temper life on. And on the helmet, you can always temper luck on. So you only really need four of those stats, but the skill gauntlets, you will want five in most cases, so that is something that you're going to have to grind for. So as you're actually playing and trying to maximize your fam, you're going to probably be using a chest piece with life, a helmet with luck, your skill gauntlets, and then eventually your attack gauntlets as well. And another thing you can use is there is a powder that you can use. Let me find that real quick. And it is this right here. You can use this and this will raise your familiarity. The way that this sounds is that it seems like it only works on weapons. But I'm pretty confident it does work on your armor as well. So that is something you can use to help you also get fam. Now one of the levels I really like to grind is great for fam farming. But I like to do it in the Tory gate. Now when I'm doing it, I'm normally playing it by myself in the Tory gate. That way I can kill all the enemies by myself and there's a lot more enemies in the Tory gate and of course I'm talking about an expedition and co-op. I'm playing by myself though. There's a lot more enemies when I'm playing in the co-op lobby like that. And I'll give you an example. These gauntlets for example, I was able to get 600 fam from one run just from doing this one mission. So this is a mission I do recommend. And there's a couple other ones, but all of them come from the final region. This is a brand new mission, Wave of Terror. I really like it for fam farming, especially if you're using everything I talked about. The accessories, the bow with the fam bonus on it, and then of course the powder. And yes, you should get about 600 fam if you're doing it in the Tory Gate on the expedition by yourself. And it's really not that difficult of a mission, I'll be honest. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, do Calamity's Pulse because you get a glue out of this. Yes, of course, you can do this. But the question is, are you going to be using the glue? I don't know. If you want to use the glue each time, use the glue. Another good level I like too, though, is Dawn of Hope. I've always loved this level. It's really easy and you get a glue from it. So that's nice. But also, you can get about 500 fam from running through this mission in one of these expeditions there's enough enemies that you can get about 500 fam so that is pretty nice two runs of this you'll max out plus you're getting glue each time that can help you max out a little bit quicker so that is how i recommend maxing out your fam now i do want to really stress this i really think it's a good idea to be pretty confident that whatever build you're going for is a build that you're going to like so I'm really going to talk about how to kind of test run your build, how to really get a feel for it to figure out, is this a build that you actually want to play? Or is it a build that you think would be awesome, but then once you play it, you realize, honestly, I don't really like that. And I don't want to waste my time, my energy, or my glue on that build. So now I'm going to talk about build crafting. And we're going to start in somewhat of a strange place. 
we're going to start in the PS4 settings. Alrighty, so when we're talking about build crafting and using our inheritables, you might be saying, why are we starting in the PS4 settings? Well, we are starting here because I'm going to back up my save. This is something I recommend you might do. Because by backing up my save, if it turns out after a little bit of playing, normally I always test against some bosses, I'll run through a mission, I might even join a co-op lobby, I'll give it a nice test run, see how I feel that the build is running and performing, and if I really like it, I keep it. If I don't like it, then I will just scrap it. Now, I always do this first, before I actually commit to maximizing the fam. The reason why is because what I can do is I can theory craft a build, use glue to actually max out my inheritables, make the build, make it to its pretty much peak performance, or at least somewhat there, you know, maybe I'll tweak it later, but I'll try out the build, and if I really think that the build has potential, I will then legitimately go and farm the fam. So that is what I do, and that's what I recommend. Now, you can always make a backup copy using the cloud if you have PSN, or you can make a backup copy using a USB if you have that. So I'm going to upload to the cloud, and you can also upload your system data because you have your character data, which is what we're uploading, and I'm uploading the system data because let's say for my build, I think maybe I might want to switch my clan. If that's the case, I can also leave the clan I'm currently in, play around with that, and then I can always just retrieve my save if I don't like it and revert everything back to normal without wasting my inheritables, without wasting my glue potentially, and also without wasting my time. Now to get your save back, you have to go to the second option here, which is save data in system storage and download it if you uploaded it. That's how you overwrite what you've done and restore your save. Or you can do save data on USB storage device, and then you copy it to the system storage if you use the USB instead. So now I'm going to launch up the game and I'm going to pretty much craft this build. And I'm going to show you how I will put the inheritables on. And I might make a build video for this build. But I'm going to continue to test it and really see if this is a build that I think is awesome. Alrighty, well I am back on the game and the first thing I did was I actually transferred my clan. I was in Toto, now I rejoined Honda because for my new build I 100% think that Honda is going to be the clan for me. So, because I joined Honda, I want to check it. I still have the 28% active skill damage, I still have the 80% damage taken half. I want to make sure I still have those bonuses in place. But because I left the clan, I have zero glory now. But this build is 100% going to be a Honda clan build. And now, I've already assembled all my armor and my weapon. Now, I just need to put my inheritables on. And then, of course, I will temper as well. I'm not going to do it in the video, but I will be tempering some of my armor to get some bonuses on it that I like. And then I'll go and play. I'll play for a while. And if I really like it... I really enjoy it. I will keep it. Maybe I'll tweak it. Maybe I might change one piece of armor. I don't know. I'm thinking about it right now. But I will test it. And if I really like it, I will 100% probably put out a video for it. Just because I think that this build has a lot of potential. I've already played around with it a little bit. Because like I said, I used glue initially to make the build. I just kind of cheated my way to make the build to kind of test pilot it, try it out, and then once I decided, you know, I really like that, I'm now going to commit my time to farming the fam. That's what I did. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to soul match a bonus onto this axe. This is the obsidian axe, and this is the axe I'm going to be using for this build. So what we're going to do is we're going to find a spear. It's this one right here. This one has mid attack chi consumption i am going to actually temper that away i don't want that stat i'm just adding it on there to add an additional skill 
and then I'm just going to temper it away later. So that's what I recommend. If you want additional skills on your weapon, just do that. Just take something crappy like mid attack, chi consumption, max out the fam, use whetstones if you want. Whetstones are very common for the most part. And then just temper it away for something better that you might actually want. So we're going to start with the helmet. And I do want to point this out. This is very important because as I was talking to people about this, a lot of people didn't really understand this, but this is an example of me messing up. Now, when I did this, I knew what I was doing. I knew I was messing up, but I did not care because I did not put a white inheritable on this helmet. And because I did not, I want to continue to use this set. I like the set for the axe because I get never wind it. I really think that's a great set bonus for what I'm doing with this build. So I need the helmet. And unfortunately, because I didn't put the white inheritable on there, I can now no longer put a white inheritable on there at all. So an example is if I try to put Tri-Spark on it, it won't go on. If you look on the right side of the finished form, it will not go on there. So that means I had to actually upgrade another helmet. And that's what I did, unfortunately. So that's a mistake you do not want to make. If you feel like you're going to put a white inheritable on there, especially like skill damage, you need to try to put that on there before you put multiple orange inheritables on there. So now we are going to commit to that. And we are also going to go ahead and put on attack gauntlets. And that's going to be the next stat. So now we are maxed out on stats. We do not need to put luck on the helmet. We will just temper that on the helmet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one of these life bonuses on here. Now this is very important. A lot of people do not know about this. But this is the screen you need to be on to do this. Because if I actually commit to it, I can no longer do this. I need to actually be in the selection screen as I do this. But as I'm selecting it, because it's maxed out in FAM, I can now hit R2 to move that life bonus to wherever I want. So let's say I want to get rid of the water resistance. Who wants that? I can get rid of that. If I want to get rid of the projectile damage taken, I can get rid of that. So that is what you want to do. You can move orange inheritables in the selection screen by pressing R2. That is something a lot of people don't know, but it's really, really good to do that. Now on the chest piece, we're going to be putting the bonus damage for the skill on there. And we're going to be putting attack on there and luck on there. We do not need to put life because life can come on it automatically. We will just temper that. It's already on there, but I'll probably temper it for a better bonus. But we will see. Always look at the finished form. Make sure you actually have what you're trying to put on there on there. That's another reason to back up your save, by the way. One reason, of course, is to actually just make sure you don't mess up. Okay, because maybe you mess up. Maybe you accidentally do something wrong. All right, so we're going to move this around. It was in the perfect spot, honestly. Who wants the water resistance? I don't. But we want the lock because of farming and all that type of goodness. Now on the gauntlets, we do not need attack, but we do need the skill damage. So we're going to put that on there. And we're also going to need to put the life bonus on there. And we can also put the luck bonus on there. So that is what we're going to be doing next. So we put life on there. Always look at the finished form. Now we are going to select it again, select one of the helmets, and every time I do this, I have to unlock it. And now I can select the spot I want to put it on, so we're just going to replace defense for now. I mean, I'm going to be replacing a lot of stuff on these later when I temper, but whatever for now. Now it's the belt. Once again, we're going to be putting the skill damage on first, because remember, the white inheritable, put that on first. Otherwise, you're going to regret it, potentially, if you don't, and you mess up with these oranges. Now we're going to be putting attack on it. And with this one, we're going to be putting luck on it. We're going to be putting life on it. Same with the boots. So in this case, we're just putting everything on it. Okay, wait a second. We don't want to mess up. I didn't actually adjust it. So let's adjust it. Make sure it's going in a place that we want it to go. There we go. Now we're going to do it again with luck. So let's go ahead and select that. Go to the helmets. Select the helmet. Adjust it. Get rid of the toughness there. And there you go. Now, finally, the boots, and we will be done. 
Now these boots, I'll be honest, I'm not convinced on the boots. I'm thinking I might go with more heavy armor with this build. I'm not exactly sure yet. So through my testing, I will determine do I want to commit to these boots? Because maybe I don't. The problem is I'm using two pieces of medium armor and I feel like that might conflict with my build somewhat. If I do come out with the build video, you will understand it a lot more. I'll explain it better in that video. But for now, just know that I feel like these boots might conflict with the build. I feel like they might actually screw over the build. And because of that, I might not commit to the boots. But they are plus 9 and 170. So, you know, I'm kind of an idiot for doing that if that is the case. All right. So let's go ahead and now we need to put on life. And we need to put on luck on these as well. Okay. What am I doing? I messed up. I was not using one with max fam on it. But there we go. We got the life on there now. And finally, we need to put the luck on. So let's select luck. Move it around. And there you go. Now we are done. I can now temper this to get some better bonuses. And if I really wanted to, I could use glue for my testing. Because I do want to actually test it at full power. But I'm pretty confident I'm going to like this build. So I'm going to refashion it. I'm going to play around with it. Do some boss rushes. Do some missions. Do some co-op. And when it's all said and done, I'm going to see, do I like this Tri-Spark build? Now, I'm not going to go into details about what I'm planning on this build. But it is going to be a really awesome build. So that's how you do it, guys. That is how you put your Revenant Grave out there for other people to farm. That is how you farm Revenant Graves really quickly. That is how you max out your fam quickly. You can either do glue or you can do it legitly. You can even play around with it to test your build, which is what I recommend because you never want to waste your time or your glue. Both of those are very valuable in this game. And of course, how do you actually set up a build? How do you place your inheritables once everything is lined up you have everything ready to go this is how you do it all so i wanted to make this video to help everybody out because i know a lot of people don't really know about how this system works or they kind of understand it but they don't fully understand it and i just really wanted to break it down as best i could to explain it to everyone but that's going to do it for this video i really do hope that you have enjoyed it and that this has helped if it has will you please like the video for me be sure to subscribe and click the bell for future Neo2 content. I'm trying to put it out as best I can. If you don't click the bell, you cannot stay notified. So clicking the bell is like the most important thing on YouTube right now. So please click the bell if you are interested. Thank you very much for watching. And I really do hope that everyone has a very nice day. And poo!